Hi, I'm Todd Sweet. I'm the chef here at the Portsmouth Brewery. And today we're going to be making coffee rubbed tenderloin skewers with uh, garlic cream and a red onion mustard. So first uh, step is to combine the freshly ground coffee with the coriander. And we're just going to kind of blend them together as a separate rub. Coffee is a nice rub for beef especially because it really brings out the, the deep flavors that are in beef. And when you grill it, it uh, takes on a totally different flavor. The, kind of a, the browning reactions added to the beef just uh, really multiply it a lot. So to uh, skewer the beef, we're going to take our beef tenderloin tips here. So tenderloin, one of the most uh, tender cuts of beef on the animal. And uh, do the tips, which are the scraps when they trim off steaks. And you get a really nice piece of meat for uh, very inexpensive. We're going to put a little bit of oil on the beef and just mix it around. And then we're going to season the beef with some salt and pepper. And mix that around. And then we're going to add a small amount of our coffee rub to this. We don't want to use the coffee rub as though it were salt because it would be too much. We just want to have a hint of the flavor of the coffee on it. Believe me, the flavor will be multiplied when it gets grilled. Okay, then we skewer them up on our pre-soaked skewers so they don't catch on fire. Normally when I do wood skewers, I actually cover the entire skewer. That way you don't have to worry about any burn parts anyway. If you have a high enough flame, then you don't have to worry about leaving a gap between the uh, pieces of meat. Normally we would want to leave a gap between the pieces of meat in order to get the browning on all of the, uh, the meat. But because we have such a hot grill, grill over here, we don't have to worry about that. It's one of the advantages of having a professional grade grill. Okay. So now we've got our beef. At this point it can be... Uh, allowed to uh, marinate in the rub for a couple of hours. The longer you let it sit, the better. Overnight is the best. And now I'm just going to put them on the grill, press them down. And I only want to turn the beef once because that way I make sure that I get the nice grill marks on it. The grill marks are where all the flavor is when you're doing the grilling technique, which is what it really lends itself to the, the tenderloin cut of meat. Uh, you don't want to overcook this. Uh, anything past medium is pretty much going to have an off flavor. It's going to have a metallic flavor. So you normally want to cook it to medium rare. Rare is good too. Uh, it'll have plenty of, uh, of flavor from that. It'll have the tenderness so you don't have to worry about cooking it all the way through. Uh, tougher cuts of meat, normally they end up getting cooked a little further so that you can uh, chew them. It breaks down the muscle tissue. So these are going to cook about two minutes on either side two to three minutes for uh, rare, medium, rare. And that's how we like to serve them here. What we do is we take a uh, red onion that we have pre-diced here. It's one red onion. And we're going to put it in a pan with some oil. We're using extra virgin olive oil here. And we're gonna put the red onion into the pan with a little branch of thyme. It's okay if it's whole because you're going to remove it later on. And so we're going to sweat this down over medium-high heat until it just starts to turn brown. And that'll draw out some of the sugars from the onion. They'll stick to the bottom of the pan a little bit. And then they're also going to be gathered up back into the onion. It'll give it some nice flavor and some uh, development of like some complexity to it. And that's going to take about five minutes to uh, sweat this down. Okay. All right, so the uh, onions have sweated down. You can see they're starting to get golden brown, and the thyme has become a little more wilted. And that means it's given up all of its liquid and a little bit of its aroma into the uh, mixture of onions and extra virgin olive oil there. So now we're just going to remove the thyme branches that are in there. And we'll add the brown sugar to it. 
and we'll just let it cool. Ideally, you're going to let this cool before you add the mustard. Sometimes, depending on the quality of the mustard or the, the brand of the mustard, uh, Dijon mustards will tend to get bitter if they're heated up. So that's why we no normally add them at the end of cooking. It's still got a little bit of warmth to it. It's not a big deal. And we'll add in the mustard. And we'll just give it a stir. Mix it around. The uh, onions caramelizing with the thyme really adds another dimension to the, the mustard. And it's fairly easy to make, so it's really a nice thing for barbecues or just putting on any kind of sausage. I'm going to spoon it out. Because this is a mustard, it'll keep for a couple of weeks in the refrigerator. And it also makes a nice little gift to give to friends if you want to put it in a jar, that sort of thing. So now I'm going to make the garlic cream. And the garlic cream is very simple. It's got about four ingredients in it. It's whole garlic cloves, which are readily available at the grocery store now, so you don't have to go peeling your own garlic. And heavy cream. But first, we're going to take some of the uh, astringency out of the garlic and some of the really strong flavor out of the garlic by blanching it three times. And to do that, we simply cover the garlic with water. And then you bring it to a boil over high heat. And once it comes to a boil, then you drain it, and then you repeat it uh, two more times. All right, so this is the third boil here. It's come to a boil three times, so now I'm going to drain off the garlic. And with this third blanching, most of the really strong raw flavors will be out of the garlic, and it'll actually be quite mellow. To make it even more mellow, we're going to use heavy cream. And we'll put a little salt and pepper in it. And we're going to bring this up to a light simmer and then we'll just drop it down and let it steep for about 15 minutes, at which point we'll puree it until it's nice and smooth. Uh, before you puree it in the blender, it's a good idea to let it cool off, otherwise it'll jump out of the blender and then you won't get to taste any of it. So I've pureed the cooled garlic cream in the blender and now I'm just going to pour it out to check the consistency. The consistency of this sauce is the consistency of what any sauce should be, which is it coats the back of the spoon. If it coats the back of the spoon, it'll also coat the food and make it very tasty. Okay, so the meat has been cooked up to a uh, rare medium rare here. You can see it's just starting to release its juices, and we've got some nice grill marks going on here. And the smell, if you could smell it, is, is just incredible. Uh, we have the garlic cream. So the way we're going to plate it, let's put down a little bit of the garlic cream. And I've got some potatoes here. These are horseradish mashed potatoes. And then we've got some broccoli. Simple steamed broccoli. We'll plate our beef tips. And a little bit of the red onion mustard on the side. There you go. Coffee rub filet of beef with the red onion mustard and garlic cream.